Catholic school, because everyone else has, uh, especially when talking about hell, that's just a very common thing, right? Catholic guilt is horrible. <laughs> like, you think white guilt is bad? <laughs> Like, wait until you get a list, like a bullet point list of things that will send you to hell. Right? Abortion, being gay, women leaders, right? <laughs> until you live that experience, you don't know what you're gonna, what you're gonna feel. Um, and especially because, like, Catholicism is just made up of, like, maniacal white men who have never had sex. <laughs> So it's like, it's kind of hard. It's almost like being a Browns fan where you're like, I want to believe in this. It's part of my history. It's part of my foundation. Next year, we're going to be better. And it never gets better. Um, like I, so I, I went to St. Paul uh, Elementary, and now this year they're talking about how it's going to close. And it's one of those things, again, where it's like, I want to support you, but like maybe it's better if you just close. <laughs> and like use that building for community or something like that. Anyway. So I just wanted to talk about a couple instances of sort of sex shame in the Catholic Church. So I would like to title this Sex in the Catholic Church. So growing up, um, there was a lot of shame in terms of like women's sexuality and all this stuff. My dad wasn't Catholic, but we would go to movies and anytime characters would kiss, he would go. He'd make that sound, I couldn't even do it. So um, it was just always this like weird embarrassment around it. Um, so I have two sort of anecdotes about that. So growing up at St. Paul's, um, I was one of the only kids who like had a different experience. So my parents were divorced. That was very different for people. Um, so I had moved to New Jersey for a year in seventh grade, came back eighth grade, and we were in science class. And again, science class is a weird thing for Catholics. <laughs> Because there's a line, right? There's a line. Um, and we were reading, I don't remember what the lesson was, but it was one of those things where uh, people were taking turns reading out loud. Um, and it came to my turn, and I was saying something like, oh, the microcosm orga, 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 or orgasms. And I said it out loud, and everyone was just like, <gasps> And from that day on, people still remember me as like the orgasm girl. <laughs> and most recently, in the last couple of weeks, there's been a meme on social media that's like, tag that girl that said orgasms have organism in your class, and people have sent it to me personally. And I'm like, I'm like, great, that was literally 13 years ago. Then when I got to high school, um, you know, I was a little bit more, you know, I was a little bit more courageous, you know, I. Uh, wouldn't tuck my shirt in, and I uh, was allies, right, with like people who didn't look like me. Like I went to the headmaster's office, and he was like, "I support what you're doing, but why are you marching with the gays?" You know, things like that, where you're like, "Okay." Um, so I I had co-founded this like dance group that was we called it the Liturg Liturgical Angels. Again, I know it's like a weird pun that kind of worked, but never did. Um, and we did this dance, we were like, okay, we're gonna make this dance. And this is about a troubled girl who keeps hitting this wall in her life, and then she's reborn, right? Like the classic Easter story. So I was the troubled girl, of course, again, because I was someone who would actually talk to people of color before high school, which was uncommon at my high school. I'm, like, I'm being 100% serious. Like, I've met people who were like, oh, I've never talked to a black person before. It's real. Um, so we, we made this dance, and I was a troubled girl, and I literally, I literally would run up to a wall and just like, hit it, part of the dance. And the day that we were doing it, it was part of one of our like, school masses, and it was in our gym, which is now known as the LeBron James Arena. Um, so I'm in the middle of LeBron James Arena. I'm getting ready for my big moment where we're doing a dance. And I realized that I forgot my costume for the second half of the dance. The first half I'm in all black and I'm disturbed and all this stuff. The second half I, I'm supposed to come out in white and like the skirt and just like be this angel. I forgot my skirt. So I was freaking out. And I was trying to talk to people and I was like, I, all I have is Spanx and a white tank top, right? I'm like. <laughs> I don't know what to do, but we're about to go. Out, we're about to go out in this arena, so I was like, you know what? Fuck it, <laughs> right? Like I'm just gonna do this. 
this? Like, why not? It's just, it's a dance, right? It's art. Like, it's interpretive. So we do, we do it. <laughs> the second half, I come out like a phoenix out of the ashes. <laughs> and this white tank top and spanx. I was just like dancing my heart out. <laughs> and afterwards, I had so much shame given to me. Like, people were like, oh, like, you showed your butt. Oh, are you, are you the new, like, sex angel girl? Like, ugh. And I'm like, dude, I'm 18 years old, and I can wear spandex if I want, right? So it just reminded me of this, like, weird, these, these constant, like, shame points where that's why now there's, like, hundreds of Catholics coming on stage and confessing, because we have to. <laughs> And that's it. Yeah.